Greetings viewers, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at CV axles. In our last video, we had a 2019 Forester in for several issues, and one of those was a clicking noise when they turned. It turned out to be a failed driver side front CV axle. Today's video, we're gonna talk about CV axles, what they are, how they work, and we're gonna tear down this CV axle and see exactly what was causing all the racket. This is a CV axle. You have four of these in your Subaru vehicle. This one came out of the 2019 Subaru Forester 2.5 Premium we worked on in last week's video. In that video, we replaced this axle due to it making noise popping when turning to the left. Now we're gonna figure out later on in the video when we tear this down what the cause of that was, but first let's talk about a CV axle what it does, and the parts that make it up. So several different parts make up the CV axle assembly. Here in the center is the actual axle shaft. On this end, we have our inboard side. The inboard side of the shaft is the one that goes into the rear differential or front differential. You've got a splined shaft here. That's what keys in, locks into that differential to transmit the power. That power goes through that shaft into the tripodal joint. The tripodal joint is keyed in, splined in to your axle shaft, which transmits the power out to the outboard side of the axle. Here at the outboard side of the axle, we have our CV joint, the constant velocity joint, and it has its own housing that has a spline as well. And this spline splines in to your wheel hub to transmit the power to the wheel to propel you down the road. As you might notice, there is a boot on both of these joints. Both of these joints are full of grease and the boot's job is to protect these joints from water, dirt, and debris to keep them nice and lubricated and protected. So now with that out of the way, let's go ahead and start dissecting this axle and see if we can figure out what went wrong with it. So as I just said, there are several different parts of the axle. The inboard side here has a tripodal joint and the output side has the CV joint in it. Now to get into this, we need to remove our band clamps here that hold the boot into place. So there are some specialty tools for installing and removing these band clamps on these boots, but I don't have them. So I'm just gonna hack at them, bend them out of the way with a screwdriver and a pair of pliers, get them out of our way so we can get in here and actually see what's going on. So we're gonna start down here at the inboard side of the axle. I'm gonna try to pry that up, but it's probably not gonna work. I'm probably just gonna have to take some uh, snips and cut it. Or hope for the best. So we got one clamp cut off of there. Man, I'm telling you, these Kinepex uh, mini bolt cutters Awesome. All right, so both our clamps are off there. Now we should be able to separate this and pull the boot apart. And of course, uh, pour grease all out on top of the toolbox. So let's go ahead and pull that apart and uh, clean up all the grease in here so we can see better what's going on in there. All right guys, so got it all apart, got it cleaned up for you. Man, what a mess that was, dealing with all that grease in there. But this is our inboard joint. This is the tripodal joint, the inboard joint. And what it does is it acts as a bellow, allowing the axle to lengthen and shorten during the suspension's articulation. So as this is going up and down, our axle gets longer and shorter and it needs to move in and out. So that's what the tripodal joint here is for. It allows your axle to move in and out and get longer and shorter as our suspension goes up and down. And also, you know, as it's going up and down, it's turning. So you've got to have all that motion in there. Now the tripodal joint, why is it called a tripodal joint? Well, it's got three points of contact like a triangle. You've got our housing here. This one piece that splines into the differential and there is a retaining clip here that holds this assembly in place. Now, when we get down to this end, there are three little bearing assemblies 
that right on the three ears of this spline piece that splines onto our axle shaft. Now that's what makes it where this can move up and down, in and out, while spinning around. Now looking at the pieces, pulling this all apart, nothing really jumps out at me as any kind of severe issue. You see a little bit of wear right there in the center of these bearing assemblies. There is a little bit of wear on the uh, machine surface here where those bearings spin. Uh, a couple of places are a little bit more uh, nicked up than others, but nothing looks insanely bad here. You know, nothing really that bad. So your boot slides over, it hooks here, hooks around here, put on your little uh, bearing assembly, slide it all together, put your attention clip in there to hold it all in there and fill the thing full of grease for you, button it up, and that is your inboard side of the axle. So now we're gonna go ahead and tear apart the outboard side, the CV part of our CV axle. And uh, I got a feeling our issue is probably gonna be in this side of the joint or this side of the axle. All right, got the boot apart, got the axle apart, got the axle shaft separated from the CV joint. Now the CV joint is completely different than the uh, tripodal joint because this one uses a series of ball bearings held in place of a cage riding on an inner race inside of the housing. That way it can move in a spherical uh, orientation and it'll move all kind of different ways unlike the tripodal joint. Now I've already found out what actually failed in this joint. Uh, you can probably see right there how that ball bearing is all galled up. When I removed the boot, I did notice that there's lots of shiny, sparkly metal flakes inside the grease inside this boot. So this is definitely the point of our failure. Our CV joint failed. Now to separate this, the axle has a little circlip here. Just uh, a quick strike on the outside here. Uh, we'll pop that loose. Now that that's loose, we can go ahead and dissect the actual CV joint itself. Now what I'm gonna do is tilt all of this over until one of the ball bearings pops up, remove that ball bearing, and just keep tilting this assembly until we get all the ball bearings to the edge and popped up out of place, just like so. Uh, we'll bend it over and pop them out, and then uh, we'll look at the carnage. So just to show you the disassembly, I'm taking a punch, and I'm just lightly tapping uh, opposite of a ball bearing. Uh, just to get the cage here up high enough to have that ball bearing pop out. Just like so. And uh, we'll continue to go around this uh, CV joint, popping out these ball bearings. And uh, once we get them all popped out, I'll show you removing the inner race and the cage. All right guys, so we've got all eight of the ball bearings out of our CV joint. And I'm sure most of you keen-eyed viewers can tell me exactly what our point of failure was here just from looking at these bearings uh, in my hand. So we'll set those down. Now that we've got to get the cage and the inner race out, uh, should be able to just turn it sideways like so, and it should fairly easily slide itself out of there when we get the holes aligned in the moon and the sun uh, just perfectly, uh, you know, line up. Uh, but now that I'm filming, it probably is not going to just pop right out of there for me. It'll just uh, mock me and make me look silly. So, yeah. So, of course, when I pop out a frame, it aligns just perfectly and pops itself out of there. We'll clean out the uh, old grease in there so we can get a better look at that. Uh, now to get the inner race out of the bearing cage, uh, we just turn like so. And uh, again, everything has to line up just perfectly for us to be able to snake that right out of there. It'll come out like so. So now we've got our bearing cage, our inner race, our ball bearings, our outer housing, and our axle. All right, guys, so here's our outer joint housing. You can see where our ball bearings, all eight of them, ride in that uh, outer race there. Then we've got our bearing cage that retains those ball bearings and keeps them riding on our inner race where they ride back and forth as the joint articulates. And that is splined to the axle shaft. 
But uh, here's our main issue. As I said just before, these ball bearings that make up the uh, joint assembly are galled all to pieces. Uh, three or four of them, I think, are tore up. Uh, three or four of them are in good condition. Now, what actually caused this failure? Hard to say. The uh, axle could have overheated at some point. The uh, metal just reached its failure point for these ball bearings. Too much uh, force exerted on them, too much heat. Uh, the stars just aligned and uh, this axle decided it was done being an axle. Uh, it's hard to say because the boot was not torn. There was ample grease inside the joint. Uh, normally when these fail, it's due to a rip boot, uh, water intrusion, grease being slung out, lack of lubrication. This one just happened to be the ball bearing seemed to failed. Uh, it's just somehow... Sometimes the way it goes, 100,000 miles, it had a good run, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, that is the point of the failure of this axle. That was our popping, that was our creaking, that was our noise. So there you go, guys. Mystery solved. And now you know all the parts of a CV axle, how they work, how they function, how the inner and outer joint differ, and uh, are more informed about your Subaru vehicle. With that said, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you all in the next one.